What's going on internet? So today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a tape grid. About two years ago, I actually posted a video showing you how to do a doodle grid. And the doodle grid is basically making letters and numbers and markings on the wall, basically doodling on the wall so that you can have reference points that you can take a picture of, throw it in a program like Procreate or Photoshop, put the picture that you want to draw on top of that, turn down the opacity, and now you have have reference points to actually use when you're sketching out your design. One of the drawbacks of the doodle grid is that when you're putting the letters and numbers on the wall, your doodle on the wall to make a reference, now you have to cover up all those letters and numbers. So for me, I like to use transparent paint to try to cover it up, but it's very difficult sometimes with the style that I do. And that is why I use the tape grid now. The tape grid basically is very similar to the doodle grid, but all you're doing is using tape. The advantage of using just tape is that now you're able to create those same reference marks on the wall using that tape, but you're also able to easily take the tape off whenever you're sketching your design and your finish in that certain area. So I'm going to walk you through one of the latest murals that I painted in Houston, Texas of an amazing curator and gallerist Janice Bond. And one of the first steps that I do whenever I do a mural is I put down a colorful layer of just paint and it's just bright and bold colors and that's just my style. And every artist is going to be different on how they want to start out their mural. But when I want to scale up the design or the portrait that I want to paint on the wall, I then start start to add a bunch of tape on the wall. I add it into areas that I believe that is going to be where the design lays on top of. So I'm not trying to layer the entire wall with a bunch of tape, mainly just the areas that I think that the design will sort of like lay on top of. And for this design, basically a lot of it is to the left and in the middle of that left side of that panel. So that is where I put most of that tape. And I'm taping uh, the wall in sort of little increments so I'm not sort of just throwing down like a long, long strip, but I'm just taking little pieces and throwing them here, I'm throwing them there. And after I have a good amount of tape on the wall, I then take a picture of the wall. You can stand on the ground, take a picture. You can use that lift or a ladder that you're using. You just wanna make sure that you're trying to take a picture in the middle of the wall so you're not skewing it to the left or to the right or up or down. You wanna make sure that you're getting directly in the middle of the wall and that is why I utilize my drone a lot so I bust out my drone and I use that to take the picture directly in the middle of the wall so it's perfectly even when it comes to the horizontal and it comes to the vertical alignment I then take a picture of it throw that in my iPad on my procreate app and I sort of layer that image that I want to paint on top of the image that I just took and I see exactly where those tape sort of markings line up. And sometimes I actually have to go back and add more tape to a certain area, mainly because I wanna make sure there's a lot of mark reference marks uh, that I can use for sketching, you know, and mainly the detailed areas when it comes to, especially the portraiture, when it comes to the eyes, nose, and lips, I wanna make sure I have a lot of reference marks. So I go back and I add more tape and then repeat that process of using my drone to take a picture and throwing that into Procreate. But once I have a great amount of of reference marks on the wall using tape, I can then go back to the wall and actually start sketching. One thing I did realize when starting this mural is that the color of the tape does matter. With my process of adding bright blue colors underneath as a base layer, it did make the orangish yellowish tape that I was using blend in a little too much. So I actually had to use a little bit of the doodle grid method, but nothing excessive. So tape color does matter. You just want to make sure that it stands out and doesn't blend in with the wall or anything that you have underneath. So once you start to sketch, you can really understand the difference when you're able to sketch your design and lay that design on the wall while actually taking off the tape and not having anything marking wise that you have to cover up. So now your design and your sketch is on the wall and it is completely clean. So you're not having to worry about using paint to have to fill up a certain area to get rid of a doodle or numbers or markings that you laid on there at the beginning. 
Ooh wee, that is clean. This method is so good it should be illegal. And this is especially important for, you know, my process where I like to have portraits where the background is showing through. So if I used the doodle grid, then I have to cover up all those letters and numbers and doodles. And this prevents me from allowing the background to be a part of the actual subject. So doing the tape grid method allows me to not have to worry about covering everything up and allowing me to actually let the background flow through to the design so a lot of that portrait that you're seeing is basically just the background color. So hopefully using this method allows you to scale up your work however big you want it while keeping your workspace clean, your wall clean, and give you less work when it comes to trying to cover up all those letters and numbers and doodles and just make sure you're as efficient as possible. I really want to say the doodle grid method is amazing but for some artists that want to utilize the background and keep that clean space the tape grid method is definitely a better choice so hopefully you liked the video like subscribe hit that bell notification and I'll see you next time. Peace.